Hey guys, it's been a while. I hope you're doing well. Uh, got a new video for you, so let's get right into it. God bless. So I came across a Facebook post today from a minister named Barry Bennett, and uh, I'm going to read his article, and I'm going to give a little breakdown in between of my thoughts in between each little segment that I, that I stop at. It's titled, What Does God Allow? Okay. He starts off saying this. After some kind of tragedy or natural disaster, we often hear Christians remarking that God allowed this to happen for some greater purpose. Such a concept suggests that God is in fact responsible for the tragedy. If he allowed it, he must have been in agreement with it. Can this be true? So I'll stop right there. Uh, well, we see God having a first grasp, a really firm grasp on the earth. He sent the flood that wiped out the entire world, minus a few people, Genesis 6, 17. He parted the oceans for those people. More than once he did that. He did it in Exodus 14, 21, and Joshua 3, 14 through 16. We see Jesus commanding the weather to obey him. That's in Matthew 8, 27. We see God sending down hailstorm to kill an army. That's in Joshua 10, 11. And in that same part, same passage, we see him stopping time to win the battle. That's Joshua 10, 13. In fact, all things are held together by Jesus. Colossians 1, 16, 17 says that. Those all things include everything in heaven, everything on earth, everything seen, everything not seen, thrones, governments, armies, rulers, everything that has an origin. Not that creating all things wasn't amazing enough, right? He's an amazing God. Every single thing stays connected. It stays held together by him. Meaning if he wanted to unravel anything at any time, he has the power to do so. Proverbs 16, 4 says, The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. Ecclesiastes 3, 3 says, For everything there is a season for, and a time for every matter under heaven. And 3.14, the same book, says, I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it so that the people fear before him. Let's continue reading the article. Uh, when a parent has a teenager and a teenager decides to take the family car, rob a bank, run over a pedestrian, and lead the police on a dangerous chase, did the parents allow this to happen? Was it the parents' will believing that some greater good would be accomplished through the death of others. Okay, so I'll stop there again. I don't see this analogy mimicking the fall. God is not the author of sin, but he has allowed it to take place in his creation for a purpose. He is truth. The opposite of truth is sin. We are not pantheists. We don't believe God is in everything and everything is God. I don't think we do God justice trying to pair his ways and judgments by human standards. God is not a man, right? What's it say? God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Or has he spoken it? And will he not fulfill it? That's Numbers 23, 19. Let's continue. He says, perhaps this will help us understand a little better the nature and heart of God. He created man in his own image and gave him the earth. And he quotes Psalm 115, 16. And I'll stop again. Uh, God gave the earth to man to enjoy, but the earth is the Lord's, everything in it. That's what Psalm 24, 1 says. That's what 1 Corinthians 10, 26 says. It belongs to God and is sustained by him for his pleasure. We can see Colossians 1 again. Let's continue. However, he expressly prohibited eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He did not allow it. He forbade it. Man's decision to disobey cannot be laid on God's feet, nor the consequences of that disobedience. Satan also rebels against God and was cast out of heaven. God gave the capacity to choose to his angels and to man, who he created in his own image. Choice allows men to demonstrate their faithfulness and love for God, or to demonstrate their independence. Without choice, there can be no true fellowship with God. Okay, stop again. As I mentioned previously, God is not the author of sin. Uh, isn't it interesting God kept the tree in plain sight? Look at the garden story. Uh, while the serpent was around, it was staying right there. We see after the fall, when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, 
God sent an angel with what? With a fiery sword blocking them from the tree of life. Why wasn't this done earlier for both trees? We could always ask. Did God know the fall was going to happen? Something to think about, right? Let's continue with the article. So did God allow rebellion, sin, corruption, darkness, and disaster? No, but the nature of men include the ability to choose. Independence and suffering were not God's will then, and they are not God's will now. He is not allowing suffering and tragedy in the earth. He is allowing man to be man. The blame falls on Adam, not God. Destructive weather, corruption, sickness, death, war, hatred, strife, immorality, crime, and lawlessness are what man has allowed. God does not allow it. But he must honor man's decision. Okay, I'll stop again. Uh, do we find anywhere in scripture where there's a divine decree that God must honor man's decision? Do we see that anywhere in the Bible that God has to honor the word of man? Does God honor man's decision by not acting in judgment in any time? Uh, what's a tumor? Why did God send them to Gath when the Philistines took the ark? It says God afflicted the young and the old in 1 Samuel 5, 9. It doesn't seem like God was honoring their decision. There's always an excuse for prosperity teachers to completely blow off God acting in judgment. Don't you realize if he acted in judgment there, nothing stopped him from acting the same way in another place. Why do people like this pastor think that way? I believe the root is dominion theology. Let me explain. Dominion theology is connected to this little God's doctrine that man, Adam, had God-like power and ruled over the earth. Um, that when man sinned, he gave his power over to Satan, which is why he is now God of this world. One problem with this type of thinking is, once this power was given to Satan, who commanded the judgment on the earth after the fall? Notice in Genesis 3, from verses 4 through 17, there's a whole chunk of time where God is just still freely walking in the garden. Adam and Eve are still doing their thing just with this understanding of evil, you know, opposite of truth. The earth was still peaceful. There's no thorns. There's no birth pains. There's no hard work for mankind yet. When God decides to confront all three of them, he says, I will put enmity. I will multiply your pain. With absolute authority, he curses Satan. He curses the earth. He brings forth thorns. He commands man to have a hard life. And tell man, tells him what? He tells him you will die. There is no exchange of power. It remains God's. It's always been his. And it shall never be anyone else's but his. Let's keep going with the article. In order to redeem mankind and grant an opportunity for a new life, God became a man. Only a man can legally redeem what man's unleashed. Jesus is that man. Only those who choose to believe in that man can be reunited with God's desire to bring life and light to humanity. God is not the author of suffering, but he is the author of redemption, new life, healing, deliverance, peace, joy, and abundance. The capacity to choose still lies within us. He is allowing you to return to him in peace. What's it say in the Bible? Only God can forgive sins, right? The sacrificial system was established by God. He put it into play in the Old Testament to show that he alone would save his people by his own hand. It is God's will. Is it God's will for man to suffer? At times, yes. He is the one who changed the first created system. He didn't have to curse woman. He didn't have to curse man. He didn't have to curse the earth. He could have forgiven or just ended their lives like he said, right? He said, if you sin, you will die. He could have thrown the serpent into eternal, per eternal prison. Uh, like he does in the book of Revelation, like we read there. Here's the issue. A lot of these people are afraid of the, the true God. They keep trying to make him someone in their own image, in their own desire. Nothing is purposeless. He does everything for a reason. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8.28. What part of all things don't we understand? For Christians, everything is working together for our good. We do not see it now, but we will someday. And not to knock this guy, he seems very sweet. He, I listened to a few of his sermons. seems very genuine. Um, I have much love for this person. Don't know him at all. Um, but there's an issue when we try to forget about who God has revealed himself to be in Scripture. 
because we don't like certain things. The Bible talks about suffering. It talks about hope. It talks about healing. It talks about all those good things too. Like this guy did not say all negative wrong things. There's a lot of things this guy said I believe in. But a lot of things I don't because there's a different type of thinking that, again, the dominion theology, um, man did not lose, did not have this divine power to command the winds and the waves and to change realities. It was always God's and it's always been God's. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, I hope you stay blessed and I pray the Lord God reveals himself to who he is, that he may be glorified now and forever. Love you guys. Take care. Bye.